Hello everybody, today I'm going to be doing a review of the Daniel Smith watercolour mixing set. This is a set of watercolours that I just got from Amazon the other day. If you want to have a, have a look at them, I've also put the link in the description. Some of you might be wondering what are these paints and what makes them special. And one of the uh, things that you've got to keep in mind is with a lot of um, watercolour paints, they don't use natural uh, minerals in them, and th these particular ones do. And I really wanted to try them out because I've recently been quite interested in, in looking into granulating paints, and I thought, hey, these come in a set of six, and uh, they're reasonably priced over on Amazon rather than uh, at the shop near me. It's almost double the price here. So I thought, you yeah, know, let's give it a go. So... Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about each of the colors. I'm going to also go through what's included, but uh, let's open it up and take a quick look. I've already um, actually cracked these open before and had to play around with some of the colors, but I haven't um, swatched them all or really tried to paint with them just yet. So I thought let's just use this as an opportunity also to show you guys what's included and um, yeah, whether you can decide for yourself whether it's worthwhile. So this is the box that it's um, included with. And uh, the colors, so it basically says nine pieces, six watercolor tubes. Now they're all five mils. So just by comparison, if you have a look at the, the tubes, that's, uh, you know, this is the amethyst and the five mil, and then you've got amethyst and the 15 mil. So, you know, quite a difference, but still you'll be surprised how far these actually go. Now I'll talk a bit about, let's see, what else does it have in there? So the the five mil, like I said, comes with a plastic travel case. So that I don't know if you use that or not. I tend to just use my normal palette, squeeze them out onto there. And there's also a color mixing guide. So the color mixing guide is here. I actually didn't have a look at that before, so I don't know what that is. Um, okay. So yeah, apparently you can mix 20 plus colors from these. So interesting. I, I don't often do swatches, especially sort of mixing mixing sort of swatches. I do swatch like individual colors that I'm interested in uh, when I first uh, get them. But normally it's not something I spend too much time on. And um, it goes through a bit of the specifications for each color. So we have, um, so we've got amethyst here, which is semi-transparent, granulating. We've got piemonite genuine, which is semi-transparent again and gen granulating. We've also got hematite genuine, which is again, semi-transparent granula granulating, may and blue transparent granulating. We've got jadeite genuine, semi-transparent granulating. And the only non-granulating color in here is rhodonite, which is uh, transparent. So uh, they, they're all, I think, about series three or four colors. So they can get pretty pricey if you buy them on their own. Uh, I like the fact that they did include this little uh, color chart here to give you an indication of what they look like when they mix um, together. There's a little bit of uh, advertising material here. Let me just close this up so you can see. A little bit of advertising material here as well. Um, so what makes them special, we call them our mineral colors. So they use, so for example, the amethyst, it says that it's made from amethyst. Amethyst, I'm saying it wrong guys. Amethyst, uh, gemstone, jadeite genuine from jadeite gemstone. Uh, so that's the uh, the whole Primatech watercolor range. So they haven't paid me anything to do this video. I just wanted to try this out and uh, see what they what what they were about. I did see a couple more reviews over the internet, but they were a bit older reviews. So you know, I think for those of you who are looking to buy these or try them out in 2021, 2022, uh, it's probably a good idea to, to to watch this video because then you'll get an idea of what. Uh, the, the composition of the colors are, sometimes they do change and you'll find that with the amethyst, uh, the the tube that I got anyway, this larger tube actually looks a little bit different than the swatch on their website. So I'll go through that a little bit later. So I'm sure you guys can read. Um, I'll also put a little bit of extra description in the, a um, little bit of writing in the description if you want to know a bit more about where these particular colors come from. Uh, you know, rhodonite, deep rose mineral from Brazil. You've got uh, jadeite from uh, Alaska, so mined in Alaska. Ameth amethyst uh, from Brazil, again. We've got Mayan blue from uh, Texas. I'm not sure exactly what mineral this is made from, Mayan blue. It must have a corresponding mineral. So 
Uh, I, I just haven't looked into that. Piemonite from Alaska and also hematite from Utah, USA. So um, pretty interesting. And let's let's give this a try. And I'm, I'm really I'm really keen to see how they actually granulate out on the paper. And they are all light fast as well, which is good news, especially if you're looking to um, preserve your paintings for a long period of time for you know other generations to come. And if you're selling them, especially, that's a big thing. Um, having some light fast colors. So let's have a go. And I'm going to swatch these quickly. Another thing I did forget to mention: they give you a bottle of this stuff here. It's uh, watercolor ground titanium white. So it's basically a type of uh, it's almost like gesso, acrylic gesso, that you, if you have a surface that normally is not able to be painted on with watercolor, so if you don't have watercolor paint, so just normal paper, or if, sorry, if you don't have watercolor paper, uh, and you just got normal paper, then you can use this to paint over the top and turn it into a watercolor painting surface. You can use this on a lot of stuff. I did a review of uh, the transparent version of this uh, on another video, which you can check out. Uh, later I'll probably link it below so basically this will just uh, be applied to any surface you can use it on metal plastic you can use it on paper but also can use it use it on wood as well so it's actually quite a uh, nice little bonus that they included I don't know how much I'll use this I probably won't use it because I've got mainly uh, watercolor paper to play around with but you know nice little um, nice little bonus there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of each of these paints onto the paper up the top and we'll kind of swatch them downwards. Okay, and uh, and then I'm going to try to do a little painting with them and see what it actually uh, ends up looking like. So let's put a little bit up the top there for the amethyst. Just uh, take a little while to do. Um, the good thing about the these paints, I've always found with these um, Daniel Smith tubes is that they're filled right to the brim and I have bought some other brands and I won't name them here but that uh, when I have tried to to squeeze them out there's you know um, a lot of air in them or there's um, you know issues with the binder separating out I mean I do get that sometimes with, with these Daniel Smith paints but not always um, more often than not they filled right to the top um, sometimes the binder comes out, but I've never had one that's uh, missing a large chunk of paint in there, which is uh, yeah, always a, always a worry um, if you do find that happening. Um, I'm not sure what else to, to really mention with these. I was thinking about something a little bit earlier, but I can't remember now. I'll probably come back. It will probably come back to me. Um, but yeah, mineral paints, something a little bit different. And um, there was a little bit of controversy actually with Daniel Smith. You can check online. This was back in, I think it was back in July 2020 or perhaps even this year. I, I can't remember. I think it was a July last year where basically the uh, a couple of geologists on Instagram, I think it's there at uh, their, their Instagram handle is World Pigment Day. You can have a look. They did an analysis of these paints under the microscope and they found that there were uh, varying levels of the uh, stated minerals on these tubes. Now what I've also done in this video as you might uh, notice as well is that I will have uh, microscope images of these swatches um, going on the side of the videos so you can have a look at what they look like under the microscope. You know I'm definitely nowhere near expert level or even beginners level at understanding um, minerals or geology or anything like that but it is interesting to see what they look like under the microscope so there's a little bit there and uh, I will um, go ahead and let's sort of swatch these out okay so let's I'm going to grab a brush at the top and also what I might do is zoom in a little bit so you can see them closer Okay, so this one, we're starting off the, at the top there. Let me just bring these tubes up so you can sort of see. Now that's uh, amethyst, amethyst. So uh, let's get a bit of that coming down the page. And one other thing I've noticed is that um, amethyst has a really, really high tinting strength. Now, tinting strength, if, if you're not sure what that means, it, it basically... Um, it basically relates to the range of the color. So how light and uh, dark basically it can get um, as you apply water. Um, normally with acrylics, it's 
you know, as they're referencing in acrylics, tinting strength is more as you add white, how much of the original color um, still uh, re is retained when you add white. So uh, with watercolors, it's more in, in the context of water. When you add water, what kind of range can you get? You get a really dark color or can you and go from really dark to really light? You know, an example of a color with low tinting range would be probably most yellows. So you can get, you know, like a Hansa yellow or something and you'll find quite often that, uh, yeah, no matter how heavy, how much, um, you know, if you use it straight from the tube, you're certainly not going to be able to get much strength out of it. And um, yeah, I'm very impressed with the uh, amethyst and it looks, you know, you can go really dark up there. It's almost black all the way to this lovely shade of purple here. And you can already see the colors separating out and granulating. I just dropped in a bit more water than usual there. So that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna go through to the next one now. This is Pyramonite. So if I just spread this out the top here, let's have a look. And this is a um, interesting color. Let's bring this down. Okay, and I'll just um, drag that all the way down like that. Yeah, it's an interesting color. I can't exactly tell uh, what it is. I, th I think it's like it's either a violet, browny sort of color, uh, but it does have a very um, rich sort of depth to it for sure. Um, I know, you know, in the past there's been some reviews of of these uh, paints, some of the other Primatech paints, and um, there's especially some of the lighter ones. Uh, you, you don't get too much range with them, but so far these are looking pretty good. So I'm going to continue on to the third one now, Hematite. So uh, Hematite is a uh, mineral rich in iron. So let's have a have a go. Let's bring this down and it should be quite dark. So start off right at the top and definitely it's almost black, like a black gray sort of color. Let's drag this down. It's very uh, it's difficult to sort of mix. It's, it's even dried a, a little bit in the time that I've taken to, to sort of uh, get the brush out and stuff. It has dried a little bit. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, it's not as dark as I thought it would be. Perhaps I've diluted it out a fair bit, but uh, yeah, it's still it's still pretty dark. But I think it has slightly less range than the other two. It's very granulating. Look at that. It's already sort of gone into sections there of granulation. I'm trying not to get these to mix too much as well uh, with each other. Well, not at all, really. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to tell what we're mixing. So the next one here, we're going to go with uh, Mayan Blue. So start off at the top. I'm going to just bring this down a couple of strokes. And, you know, interesting, it's already started to dry as usual. Okay, so that down. And apparently, yes, it is a granulating uh, pigment here. So we'll see what happens if we just leave that for a bit. And... Uh, Go on, I, I do think though that I have mixed a little bit too little up the top. If I just drop in a little bit up there, um, just like that, let me just see if I can just get that to tint a bit more. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the darkest tint, tint that you can make. So certainly these two have slightly less tinting strength than the first two, um, but they're, they're fairly dark still, I have to say, and um, the granulation is just beautiful especially in the two middle ones there the hematite there's little patches of these uh, black gray sort of areas that have just um, moved around this one here the um, um, piemonite i could keep referring back because i'm forgetting their names and they have i have to say one thing i i, I um i'm always excited about daniel smith is they have excellent marketing the names that they give these things you know you just want to buy them as soon as you, you hear them so uh, that's just look at that you got some red some beautiful red in there uh, a bit of I think that's a bit of violet pink sort of color up the top there it's a it's like a brownish um, there's browns in here that's amazing there's so many um, there's so much going on here um, I haven't even got through the whole lot yet but anyway let's go through this next one before I get too distracted I've already lost the lid on this one and look at that it's really the colors are starting to pop out um, of the tube. 
jadeite. So let's swatch this one downwards. A bit of water up the top, and then I'm going to bring that down. So um, don't quote me by by this, but I think jadeite is the is what um, jade is, is derived from. So uh, the the raw deposit that uh, jade is 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 derived from. I brought up the color specification sheet, and it actually says that it's uh, it actually says jade is derived from nephrite and jadeite. So yeah, interesting. Um, but we'll bring this down. I don't. Um, see it all granulating that much yet, but as, as you know, it does take a little bit of time to separate out. So let's give it, let's give it a bit of time. And um, this top part here, it's you know it's pretty high tinting strength as well. So you can see, see that sort of moving through. And uh, it's definitely you know compared to these two, and that's got a lot higher tinting strength. This last one here, Rhodonite, and I'm, I'm going to feel like this is going to be the um, one with the least tinting strength. It looks kind of pinkish in color. So let's just let me shift that around a bit. Okay, and that's pretty much as dark as I'm going to be able to get it. So if I just move this down, put some more water in here, shift this down like that. Wow, it's a really, it's a beautiful pink color um, cool red pink sort of color I can put a little bit more in there I find this is uh, certainly out of all the paints this is most certainly the one with the least uh, tinting strength now, I keep referring to that because uh, the style that I paint with I use a lot of contrast and uh, it's important for me to be able to have um, a color or use colors that go um, a long way in terms of uh, light to dark values. So certainly not going to be able to get it with this one. Uh, now the, it, apparently, again, this is the only one which is non-granulating out of the six. So I'm going to leave this to dry a little bit. Okay, so I'll just line these up so you can see what they look like. Okay, because I me I probably forget which one I've done but I have kept them in order okay so they've all dried off now and let's have a closer look into each one and especially as some of the close-ups on the amethyst now you can see here it might be difficult to see under the camera but there's a bit of a shimmer uh, effect in here and I also have a video up on the the uh, microscope view so you can have a look what it, uh, the shimmer is coming from but there looks to be little bits of minerals uh, sparkly minerals in there and uh, that really um, give it a bit of a you know, just a bit of a sparkle which is which is quite interesting the now that it's dried you can see there's definitely quite a large range from this dark to the light color here uh, so that's the amethyst you've got the piemonite genuine which um, yeah again you have a very very sort of uh, large range and at the bottom I haven't diluted enough but if I did you'd definitely be able to get a, a quite a light color from that so you can see there it's granulated out very nicely this one here is all the hematite I think this probably has the most obvious granulation that you can see on the page and down the bottom as well even in the lighter areas which is what I find interesting uh, granulation in, in the lighter areas is it tends to be a little bit rarer than if you have areas that are just uh, you know light and dark mixed together you can see that a bit more effectively the Mayan blue that's actually dried off dried off to quite a uh, quite a dark tone up the top so before when I was painting I did think that it was it wasn't um, a very highly tinting sort of paint but it's, uh, it's very nice it's almost a turquoisey turquoise blue kind of color and um, it's definitely like some kind of a, a cooler blue color um, and there is some granulation in here it looks slightly opaque which is um, yeah interesting there's the jadeite here beautiful green and this has uh, looked as dried off very dark up the top as well and we can this uh, you know i haven't had enough water down the bottom but if i did this would have had quite a large range so Probably the two colors that have the least range would be the rhodonite and the 
uh, hematite, if I added a bit more hematite at the top, I probably could have gotten that darker. But uh, in terms of the quantity of paint that I've used up here, it's uh, pretty similar to all these other ones. So yeah, it's definitely quite interesting. Um, you know, as I touch the uh, paper as well, I do feel a little bit of a difference, uh, a little bit of a scratchiness on the paint when compared to the actual paper. So uh, whether that's the minerals or just part of the paint texture coming through, it's an interesting observation. I was always wondering whether if you'd sort of scratch away or, you know, put your finger on it or something like that, it would remove any of the pigment. And it doesn't look like it, even in these lighter areas, the uh, pigment adheres to the page, um, you know, as you can see, I'm really being a bit aggressive with it here. So it's not moving around every, anywhere. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get some water in there and just test some of the lifting strength. Normally with these granulating paints, especially with mineral paints, they do lift off a lot easier than any of these staining paints. So let's go ahead and um, give that a try. So just a bit of water on my number six round brush and I'm gonna to try to lift up in uh, maybe one of the darker areas here. So I'm just giving a bit of a, bit of a sort of scratchy, scratchy kind of treatment over here, like that. Okay, like that. So normally I just wet the paper with a bit of clean water, like that. There we go. And then I grab a tissue over on the side and to lift out like that. Okay, and let's lift it out very, very well. Try here. Pin knight. This is a bit, a bit more work. A bit of scratchiness. It also depends on how much you scrub onto the paper as well. Uh, this is certainly taking a bit longer to do than the other one, but it does lift off quite well like that. Uh, a bit of the hematite, let's put some water in here. Okay, just uh, re-wet that mix in there, a bit of that tissue paper. So that comes off pretty well. Let's try the May and Blue, scratch that around a bit and lift off. And we've got the Jadeite Genuine. Excellent, just a bit more water in there. Lift off. Okay. And then we've got the Rhodonite. A bit of water through there. And I'm going to just try to lift that one off. So they do have, they all have very good lifting capabilities, which, uh, look, yeah, I, I think it's a good bonus. And uh, the only time where you might run into problems is if you do a lot of layering work, you might have to just be a little more careful. I know it's artists that um, layer a lot, they tend to use some, uh, more staining kind of pigments if you, if you don't want that previous layer to, to lift off too easily. But I, you know, I use a few different layers in my paintings as well. And, you know, I love granulating paints and even if they mix and mingle around a bit, I actually like that effect. So can you try it? Uh, you know, we might try to just lift off a bit at the bottom as, as well. While I'm here, let's just put a bit of water here. Down the bottom. It's not going to be much different actually for a lot of them because I've changed that mixture too much for some of them. Um, lift off. Okay, so similar, only similar kind of effects at the bottom as well. So, fantastic. Uh, so what we'll do now, I'm going to just do a quick little painting at the bottom. Uh, maybe a couple of paintings, we'll see how we go, just to demonstrate. I always want to try out how they appear as well. This is a sheet of arches uh, or arch paper, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And uh, it's 100% cotton and we'll go ahead and try these out on an actual painting. Okay, I've sketched out this landscape here. It's just an imaginary landscape that I put together. And it's normally something that I do as an exercise as well. But I think this would be good to demonstrate the few different colors that we have on here, see how we can uh, utilize them, I suppose. So having a look, let's try firstly getting in the sky. I think that might be the easiest way to start. Uh, so let me just, let's go with a bit of this Mayan blue. 
Maybe do that main blue in the sky like that. Probably squeezed out way too much from the tube actually. Uh, it does go a long way. And remembering the skies, you have to make them pretty light, uh, especially down the bottom. Okay. And I normally use cerulean blue for skies, which is, uh, again, it is a cool blue color. So this does, you know, it falls in that same category. It is a stronger, it's a cooler sort of blue color though. But if you even pick up some of the amethyst, put that into the sky, that can also be a nice little color that you go with. Just putting that through a bit of that. And uh, interesting, you do get that sparkly effect with the amethyst. And uh, you know what I'll do? I'll just go in with the Mayan blue in the sky first and then I'll drop in uh, some of the amethyst so um, parts of the sky you can also do this sort of thing where you just wet pre-wet a bit of it like that then you let some of these areas of the sky peek through like that just wet this whole area with the brush first I'm just using one brush for this whole thing uh, it's going to be interesting I think this whole scene is going to look quite granulated and which I love love granulation oh I forgot to do one thing I forgot to put uh, mountains in the background which I'll we'll do we'll, we'll do that wet into wet uh, seeing as we've already kind of wet down this area so no problems at all so what we do we do that wetness just uh, keep it fairly damp up the top here let's uh, let's experiment around let's go in with some some of this darker Mayan blue up the top here, a bit more up the top here, and maybe some more amethyst. It really, it's really quite dark, so you you can get a lot of range from this, this amethyst, and a bit of water in there as well. And just to change things up, but around the bottom I'm going to leave it the same. Sometimes I just drop in paint like that. So if you drop it in straight. Uh, it does spread a fair bit actually, so it's interesting. It doesn't go, it doesn't, um, you know, over a spread though. I think there's stuff that you can add to paint oxgal which makes it uh, spread a lot more. A lot of manufacturers add it into their paints. I know Schmincke does, but uh, paints like Mugello don't which means that their paints uh, are easier to control for beginners. Okay, that looks pretty good for the sky. A bit of an exaggerated sort of sky. I mean, if we drop in even some of this piemontite, piemontite in the sky, what's that doing? Some spots, maybe that will make some interesting color. I don't know. Um, it's a good way to test how these mix together as well. I think they actually mix very well together. The fact that they're all granulating colors and they're not hyper-saturated colors as well means that you can use them straight from the tube. You don't really have to mix them with any neutral tint or anything to dull them down. Uh, I tend to do that at times, but uh, yeah, I mean, I often paint with quite a exaggerated palette anyhow, but um, if I do want to dull things down, I tend to actually pick up a bit of the, the neutral tint. So, yeah, that's a little bit of that in the sky. Um, yeah, just to see how that would mix. Normally, I wouldn't use these colors for the sky. Let's put in a bit of green. So the jadeite, we mix a bit of that jadeite here for these trees here in the background. Let's put a bit there. Let's put a bit here. Okay. And before I forget, I will actually get a mountain range or something going over in the background, which needs blue, but I've run out of that. Let's get some of this amethyst going through like this, just around the houses, like that. There, there, cut around. This can be this uh, distant mountain or whatever here in the background that I'm trying to imply. Okay, maybe going all the way through there. Yeah. Okay, a bit of wet and wet. Um, I like that they don't spread all too much as well. 
can get a good level of control with them. You see that branching out a bit there. Uh, I do need to bring it down over that left hand side though. Just wet this area one more time. You might be able to get it through get it through here. A bit of that amethyst. I'm pronouncing it right now, amethyst. And uh, coming around here. Just like that, just some soft color. Um, it is a bit duller on that left hand side as I've run out, but it should be fine. Some of the jadeite on the trees. Uh, let's use some really light jadeite there. I like the uh, subtlety of the, the colors. They're not certainly not too vibrant. And that might be, might be your thing, or might not be. Okay, so look at that. they're kind of just melting in, doing their thing. Uh, add in some darks while there's still some wet in there, like that. Great. And the houses at the back, I'm just going to pretty much leave the roofs in white. And uh, near the bottom, I'm going to grab some hematite, which is this lovely granulating, uh, granulating kind of grayish paint. And I'm going to use that underneath, like that, in all the houses. You can try going a bit darker. It's actually quite difficult to go dark with it. Oh, that's okay. You can, you can. You just got to use it a little bit thicker, like that here. Uh, where am I going to put the light source? Let me have a think. The light source can maybe come from the right to left, something like that. Right to left. Okay, it's going to be darker here. It's always important to choose that. I've left it to the last minute. Bit of darkness there, there. Don't be afraid to add in some really dark bits as well, where you can. Bit for that left hand side. This um, house like shape that I popped in there. Bit here, underneath that house. Might mix in a bit of the uh, piemontite in there as well. Let's try some, that probably increase the tonal range as well, just darken that down further. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. A bit of hematite in the center like that just to bridge this gap. Um, like that. I'm kind of thinking what can we use for the ground. It's not really a, a, a yellowish color in here. The warmest colors that I have are really the Hematite and the rhodonite. So I'm probably gonna use this for the ground. Okay, maybe and we'll also drop in some of the some of the rhodonite, maybe also a little bit of the amethyst too. I've, I've, I've used it all up though. There's none left. A little bit there. Just bring it across. I don't want too much into the ground because we're gonna start getting out of hand there. I want some contrast with the sky. Another thing I can do is start using some green, this jadeite, into the ground as well. And this can help to create a bit more contrast. And, you know, can be green too, because they are walking in a uh, field or something maybe. This bit of this rhodonite here. It's a bit pinky sort of color that could be you know, something there, I don't know, a, a bush or something. Flowers down to that side there. More of the jadeite, let's bring that across. Got a very impressive range. Bring that all the way down the front. You know, like that. Here. There. Trees as well. I do want to put in a little bit of this uh, piemontite for the trees. A couple here that I had just painted in a bit earlier. 
drawn in a bit earlier on me. Look at that. It's a beautiful brown. I'll certainly be using this one often. You can already see the amethyst just mixing around with the pimentite to create a very interesting sort of look. And we can go in and this is some wet and wet work as well because uh, the sky is not completely dry yet. Yeah, there's that tree sort of coming out, slanting over. For whatever reason, I've added this one and kind of slanting over. This one cutting over the front. You know, we might even, for example, I could get in a tree here in the front, more obvious sort of tree branch, um, just using almost pure pigment to get this one in. Maybe I can mix hematite and piemontite to get a darker look, something like that. Okay, uh, mix all this down. One thing I find is, is that it's certainly easy to get a color balance um, across this whole scene because of the uh, limitations of, uh, it's just not as saturated, so you can certainly just get away with uh, using the paint straight. Some of that there. Okay, looking good. I might actually add a little bit more of this pimentite at the front of the scene. To darken it down. Um, let's how about we mix, let's just mix everything together into a kind of a, a, a general mix. And I'm just going to use this, this is getting out of hand, but I'm just going to use this to get a, a darker sort of mix in, in areas. It's almost turned into like a black type of color now. Um, down the front to just get in some textures and you know there's even these poles and um, things like that have in here. Some figures. It's very hard to see them. And you can always go through later and get in a bit more color over the top. But I'll give this a real quick dry. Okay, I think that's dried off very nicely. And you can see the areas of granulation here in the sky up the top. Uh, here through the, the trees and even this uh, branch coming in there underneath the houses the hematite separates out beautifully here at the bottom and especially with the hematite you can see the granulation most there you've got um, you've got this little bit of granulation here in the front as well too uh, with the, it's just a mixture of colors that I've used pretty much all the colors mixed together um, so let's put in a few dark colors and uh, it's more just to try the range of these colors because I wasn't able to get in any super dark colors except for maybe there and for the tree. Um, so I've got some piemontite and a bit of hematite. Let's mix them a little bit together. Okay, and so I get this kind of darker sort of color and I'm going to put this in. Maybe here's some little water, little water here and here get myself in um, some of these little poles and things here that you can mark out with the brush just seeing if I can how dark I can get these in really because there may be a time I have to actually get them in pretty dark uh, branches and stuff like that so this is a it's always a good time to try these out these little sketches you know even here in the tree you can just play around with some of these branches and Get in a few coming up like this. There, just some dry brush strokes. The figures as well here. We can just get in some indication of the figures. And, uh, you know, a couple of legs, legs there for that one. Maybe a head here, here, like that. Oops. There we go. And the shoulders, of course, as well. And maybe a little shadow running across to that left hand side. Let's have a look what else we can put in. You know, a few more of these little poles. And I'm using more water now just to see what it's going to look like. So it's still, you know, you can get very dark tones using these. Okay. You know, bits of grass and stuff that you can indicate as well here. Just little bits. On the ground 
just getting some more of these little shadows and stuff like that running to the left. It's not super important, but uh, some of that would be good. Maybe a shadow coming in from the left here. Okay. There's a lot really you can do, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to sort of stick around um, trying to uh, get everything in, you know, all the little details and stuff. It's just more to check out the range and um, how this this uh, paint works. And I'm actually, I'm really impressed with it. And, you know, I'm not to say I'm not going to use my normal palette again, because I definitely will. But uh, the effects, the granulation, uh, some of the colors uh, really draw me in more. So I think Mayan Blue, the Amethyst, the Hematite, and maybe the the um, Piemonite, they, they really, these four really draw me in because of their granulation and um, yeah, just the the, the the way that they behave on the paper. So you can still get in a fair bit of control. They're quite muted colors. Yeah, as I said before, the amethyst does have this sort of sparkle in it, which uh, may be hard for you to see on the camera, but I can see it every time I sort of move my head. It sparkles uh, from certain angles. However, the only color that I, I didn't like was rhodonite. I just don't know where I would use this. I'd perhaps use it mixed. Uh, you probably mix that with amethyst. Uh, but amethyst isn't isn't even a yeah it's a little bit of a cooler color so yeah well, cooler than it looks in the swatch anyway so I'm not sure where this one fits in on on uh, you know on my my sort of list of colors to use uh, in this mix but I definitely use these five um, if you have any questions or you want to know a little bit more. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to know a little bit more about these colors, anything at all, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, check out the playlist on the right. I release new tutorials and art supply reviews each week to help you progress faster in your watercolor journey.